Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to get into something that uh, came up yesterday. I was talking with uh, my friend Reed, and uh, we were discussing the uh, memory the problems go wrong as we uh, <laughs> as we as we as we begin to age and uh so uh the uh uh you know it's like that leonard cohen song he, he says uh my looks are gone my hair is gray i ache in the places i used to play and uh as we get older there is um certain things happen and the question becomes how much of that is inevitable and how much of that can we do something about? So, you know, one of the, you know, sort of the go with the flow ideas like, yeah, well, everybody gets old and, you know, deal with it. Um, but there's another possibility that, um, that uh, I'm looking at is, is that we can use our, conscious awareness to change the dynamic somewhat. So one of the things particularly we were focusing on was the deterioration of the nervous system, how, uh, you know, some people uh, are going to get this um, peripheral neuropathy, which can be felt as a, uh, you know, like a, uh, either a numbness or even like a painful, like a, a stabbing kind of pins and needles kind of kind of feeling but it also extends to things like arthritis and uh, other things can we change our our physical body via our the interaction with our mind and with a mindful practice and so the I want to kind of dig into that a little bit and so the one of the theories that I kind of like about aging is that there a, a lot of the the problems uh, are, are, are blamed on what uh, some call epigenetic noise and epigenetics is the effect is a science that, that studies the effect of environment both internal and external on gene expression and so how your body mind takes the information from the genes and is uh, creates new proteins which then do cool stuff inside your body so um as you change your environment both internal and external you can make things bad or worse as we know if we you know eat you know twinkies and slurpees all day we know that that affects our genetic expression same thing if we exercise and we breathe, breathe and 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 feel um, meditate or whatever it that that will also affect our genetic expression, and so the the can we do something with that? And my uh, I'm posing this as a question. And I'm, I'm by not in any way an expert in this area. So it's just something that this, uh, it makes me say, huh, what else is possible here? And going back to Taiji Tran through the Western Gate, you know, one of the things I, I, I was putting forth there was that the idea that entropy, which is the tendency of a system to either lose energy or to fall into a state of, disorganization and you know there's other ways of expressing entry but that's those are two of my favorites you know one is like a thermonuclear or not thermo, a thermodynamic expression which is that a system has a certain amount of energy and that's what keeps it that amount of energy or that that energy configuration is what allows that system to maintain itself and here a system we're talking about like a physical body or something and as it loses energy, it starts to not stick together quite as well. It starts to decay or, or fall apart. So um, that entropy is inversely proportional to the amount of coherence in the system. That is, 
And it's almost a truism. It's like saying that the, the more something falls apart, the less together it is. It's like, you know, coherence is an expression of wholeness. So the less whole something is, the more fragmented it is. It, it, it really doesn't give us any new information, but it's a catchy bumper sticker. So, um, and what it does is it says, if I can bring more coherence into the body mind and do things that encourage that coherence, that maybe there will be less entropy. And here, in a, we can see it as an expression of that epigenetic noise, because the epigenetic noise is as as the body gets older, there's it accumulates these these insults to its integrity, and it starts to like an old car starts to develop shakes and rattles and uh, and pings and and it starts to not be as smoothly functioning as it once was. So if uh, this accumulation of epigenetic noise, which is noise in the nervous system, which clouds the ability of the genetic expression, then things start to decay. And in case of, in the case of like say, purple neuropathy, that's kind of what it is. It's, it's the nervous system is, is so noisy that it, what's coming across the sensory neural input is distorted either that or it's shut down so that you get like a numbness. So can we, by creating more coherence and bringing that coherence into parts of the body which are, tend to be ignored, will that create an effect? And um, my, my preliminary, sense is that yeah yeah it does it does help and whether it actually corrects a specific malfunctioning body system uh, or not it just the fact of doing these things has other benefits that make things better anyway so it's like what do i got to lose in the in that category so we fall back into a uh, like a real fundamental Taiji principle, which is the E leads the Qi and the Qi leads the blood, which is a, a way of saying that your, what I'm calling a super conscious mind, but your, your higher mind that which is your, that, that which transcends your rational thinking mind, but is actually that calm, peaceful, centered gap between thoughts mind leads the chi and the chi leads the blood. So if you can get into that, that calm, relaxed state and then direct your attention, it leads your body, body's resources to the area that you're bringing your attention to and it starts the healing process. Doing this also has the effect of calming and balancing your autonomic nervous system by getting by getting more parasympathetic activity. Because whenever you're you're in the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest part of the nervous system, that's where the the, the healing occurs. We have a tendency to be way over overbalanced to the side of the go, go, go part, which is the sympathetic nervous system. And one of the observations I made is that, you know, in decades of clinical uh, observation, as well as my own personal research, is that the thinking mind tends to crank up the sympathetic nervous system. And it creates responses which are stress responses. So if we don't balance it, and, and, and doing that is just fine, and that's part of life, that's, that's what we do. We like to stress ourselves, but if we don't get a chance to pause and reset, go to the parasympathetic, 
often and for a sustained period, then we tend to wear out faster. Things wear down. And so you need to kind of let the thing let the, let the let the thing cool off a little bit every now and then so that you can we can um, reconfigure, reset, and and bring back into a state of wholeness, a state of homeostasis, uh, calm your calm your stuff down and be able to get nice and relaxed and and be able to heal. So what we're talking about here is in our practice, is, there is this oscillation between that doing and the non-doing between the motion and the stillness this is a, a topic that i've discussed many times you know in this series and it keeps coming back to that and it's, it's worth checking out so if we can in that stillness direct our awareness and use the e the wisdom mind to lead the chi or the energy, the and that brings resources. It leads the blood, and blood here is is just another name for all the the body's resources that are necessary to do the healing. So my hypothesis is that yeah, if we if we do these things often and diligently, good things will happen. That we can theoretically repair these different parts of the body, particularly those of us who have uh, had an attitude of road hard and put away wet, you know, for most of our lives, we push, 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 and then collapse and, and then go up again and push, push, push again. And if you can find these, the, a way to intersperse some, some of that calm space where it's not just the calmness, not just the stillness, but it's what do we do in the stillness? What do we do to direct our awareness so that we can bring about a directed healing to specific parts? 